Oh, that was that was you. I was about to I was about to blame it on my booty Wi Fi. <laughs> oh, la 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 la, you good? You know, trying to pay respect to DMX and they and they and they cut a brother off, yo. You, you know, know how they do, man. You ain't clear that. Not for DMX though. God damn. All right. The check is in the mail. The check is yeah, in the mail. The check is in the mail. You know what I mean? Cool. Um, yo, trendsetters. I don't know if you know. Jay Jones got the trendsetters bike club. He said he's trying to get us on the bike club, yo. Yeah, yeah. We I, I rode out with them one day, man. Great, great group of dudes. Um, good ride. Um, you know, not on no egos or anything like that. It's just a good time. Good people to ride with. Um, well, listen, man. I need about another six months of stretching, and we I'm good to go, bro. Six months is winter again, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Ex- extreme sports, bro. Extreme sports. You know what I mean? Nice. Um, nah, yeah, yeah. listen, listen. I just want to. You know, shout out to everybody that's in the building. You know what I mean? I hope everybody had an amazing day. And if you didn't, try to focus on one thing, two things, ten things that was positive and forget all the rest. Um, for those of you who are in the chat right now, you know how I, I normally, my guests normally don't come this early. So I get a chance to rock out for at least a minute. You know what I'm saying? But I forgot who I was dealing with. You know, I forgot who I was dealing with. You know, one of the one of the illest athletes. I sent out the text earlier. And pe- my man Ali Mayer was just like, you know, Ali Mayer, OJ was just like, yo, yeah, yeah. Dev the Flash Warren. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, big up, Word. big up, big up Flash. Thank you, sir. Big up, big up Flash in the building. But now that we got that out the way, we're going to get right to it because we got some people in the building that want to you know, he, we, we already heard your story. A lot of us already know your story. Big up to DJ yeah. These Tracks, who's been giving me some amazing drops, some amazing intros to both of my shows. Appreciate you all the way out in Savannah, Georgia. Um, see, reality was good. Uh, we got to talk because, you know, we got to figure out if I'm coming to your studio, if you're coming to mine. Um, you know, shout out to everybody that's in the building. Baby Bro, a.k.a. the Arrogant Pupil. Uh, mm-hmm. Shout out to you. Um, big up to... Your, your junior who got accepted to, you know, every college he, he wanted to and will be going to SUNY Purchase. So, you know, he already know how proud I am of him. Um, yes, but, sir. Shut up. You know, la- ladies and gentlemen, now that we got that out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. You are now tuned in to the TKB Report. <laughs> And today's guest is actually TKB alumni, who's also yeah. my friend for over <laughs> 30 paid. years. He's, he's, he's my brother. He's more like family. Uh, he was actually the second guest to ever come on to the TKB report. He was a part of the guinea, the guinea pig stage. You know what I mean? He, <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was willing to do that for me, you know, and I'm greatly appreciative of that. It was actually one yes, of the sir. best ones that I ever did because, you know, me and his brother go way back to dirt bikes that got, you know, mismatched pieces on them. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. So he has, you know, gone on to do some amazing things in the entertainment industry, uh, music production, DJ, video. He's now doing photography, doing an absolutely amazing job of photography, even through COVID. Uh, there is no such thing as a setback for this young man. You know, that a setback is only an opportunity to show exactly how much skills he has you know i've never seen his brother down he always finds a way to reinvent himself ladies and gentlemen help me in welcoming my brother my friend my family mr divine warren of divine warren photos thank you sir thank thank you for having me back listen listen man it was only right because that that first time, I didn't know what the hell was going on, bro. New to social, <laughs> new to social media, you know. New to this whole thing. You you know how we work. I used to record my interviews mainly out of your studio, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. What, what what they call uh, documentary style interviews. I was never in front of the camera. I was always behind the camera. I kind of preferred it that way. But you know, this whole COVID thing, you know, to to stay relevant, you got to reinvent yourself. Yes, and sir. So. 
I don't I don't get the illest intro. A lot of people in here, we already know what it is. I, I wanted to bring you back because when you were here the last time, you had some some real amazing photos that kept getting we kept getting chopped off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we kept getting cut off. So I figured it would be dope if you came back to show some photos and for us to really dive into the backstory to some of the most amazing iconic pictures of your career. So mm -hmm. let's let's just jump right into it. You know, uh, let's let's just jump right into it and show the people uh, what you got. And we go, we going we gonna name this show specifically for you because this show is all about you. Picture that. So what pic what what pictures we gonna get into right now? All right, um, I guess this one is relevant now. Let's spin this around. Um, this is a picture of DMX, um, a shot at the um, Master of Ceremonies concert at Radio City. Um, it, it wasn't a good performance. Um, you know, dudes struggle with addiction. And at that time, I really didn't understand addiction. And, you know, I kind of felt like, you know, people on drugs, they should get off them. You know, but it's if you've ever tried to do it, what really made me understand addiction is you ever tried to do a cleanse and stop eating sugar, you will see that you are addicted to sugar. And, you know, you may be able to do it for a week. You may be able to do it for a month. But as soon as you start eating sugar again, it's like your body like wants it. When you're around sugar, you want it. So I can only imagine something that people have, you know, a chemical and a psychological dependency on it. So this wasn't a great show from him. He was really kind of, you could tell he was high, he was mumbling. But still, um, his presence and the energy in the room was still big anytime his record came on. He really didn't have to do the lyrics, like everybody knew the lyrics, you know. So um, this was the last time I saw him perform. I don't think he did too many more performances after this. Like, I think he popped on stage for a couple of things, but um, this is where he came out and did a whole show. He was actually the headliner. And um, it was kind of a, for me, it was a disappointing show because I've seen what he can do. Like he can tear down whole festivals by himself, on stage by himself, no hype man, and just crush it. So, um, you know, it was disappointing, but at the same time, this picture is enlightening to me because it gives me an understanding into like what a lot of, you know, a lot of our people are struggling with, you know? Now, now, even with it being a disappointment of a, of a performance, and shout out to all the EC family that's in the building, uh, Crunch, yeah, you up. know, Yaz, you know, AKA Quick, uh, these tracks, uh, DJ Leon, legendary, legendary uh, DJ. We may have to Leon. have you back on the show, uh, you know, and if I missed you, I'm sorry, but you know, uh, shout out to Monique. I'm glad you're feeling better, uh, you know, but um, Will, Will in the building. But what up, Will? Talk about the energy from the crowd that you felt. Um, I even mean, with people, the performance being what it was. You you can't. You see my shirt, right? You can't. Um, There's some. You can't front on DMX. I mean, um, he's just one of those artists that if you, even if you don't like his music, you can't front on his influence on the game, and you can't front on it the energy that he brought. You can't front on the music that he brought. Um, he's an icon of our era, you know, um, and people respect that. And when you hear Rough Rider Anthem come on, whether he's mumbling the lyrics or he's doing them um, exceptionally well, you know, you, you feel it. You know, he's definitely a dude that regardless of his, his, his bad show was somebody else's great show. You know, I think it was bad for me because I, I know his potential and I know what he could do. For everybody else, they probably loved it, you know? Like, he did the whole thing. Like, he climbed up on the speaker. He did, you know, whole DMX thing, crazy energy, you know? But I just could see that he was kind of in and out of, you know, that great performance that he probably could have um, gave us. Well, listen, uh, thank you for sharing that. And, you know, Shout out to Faces by Drea. We'll talk later. But um, you you had the opportunity to to witness some iconic hip hop moments. You've had the opportunity to capture photos of some of 
our icons, you know, including the late great DMX. Rest in peace to DMX. You know, prayers up to your family and prayers up to anybody whose family is dealing with any type of addiction at all. Um, how do you how do you get intertwined in some of these in some of these with, with some of these opportunities? Um, it, some of, I mean, a lot of it is relationships, um, and sometimes it's just people reaching out and finding me. Um, people needing photos, and you know, I don't know how far you know how far removed I am from the person that recommended me. But I feel like if you're out there and you're doing great work, the word travels by itself. You know, so it's important that, um, you know, be on time. I think that's a big thing. <laughs> so, you know, just showing like, up on time, but you like way ahead of other people. No, but no, I mean, but you said I was on time for the show. That's my represent because no, I think wondering. being on time is um, a big thing, especially for um, people in industry jobs. Like when you don't show up, it makes people or you're late. Everybody gets nervous and people want to be able to book you and not have to worry about anything. I think a lot of my jobs come from me just showing up on time. You know, it's something so simple. And just, you know, being professional. There's no CPT. There's no CP time <laughs> when, the start, when the money starts coming in. People don't want to hear about, you know, I'm on black people time or anything else. Like, nobody wants to hear that. You know, nobody wants to hear that you're late when, you know, it's a corporate job or something very important. You need to be on time and on time is late. So you need to be early, you know? So that's how you, you know, and then your reputation, good or bad, precedes you. So they're like, no, you know, ID, man, he'll be there. He'll be on time. He'll show up early. He'll make sure everything is good. Well, listen, we, we used to hire, we used to hire, you know, Will Padel, cool by Dace. Um, we used to, you know, we did quite a few parties. And I'm not sure if I was ever late. I was always late, yeah, but, but, Dev, but, Dev, <laughs> but Dev was always good. And it was bad if, if we were late because we was the ones carrying the speakers in the crates. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we, yeah. we go upstairs with big ass speakers. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, yeah, that's dope though. That's dope. So now moving, moving right along, I just, I just got a feeling we're going to stay in the culture. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so, so what, what, what do we have next? You know, in this yeah, picture, so, that segment. So the next thing I have is just a, um, it's kind of two images just to um, give you insight. So this is a picture of Nas um, at the very last Rock the Bell story, Rock the Bell's concert. And what happened was I was, um, it, basically when you get booked to shoot a concert, you, they give you, Sometimes they tell you exactly where to stand, and sometimes they give you free reign of where you can stand and post up. But usually, once you post up, you don't have the freedom to move. So I actually got stuck, um, positioned myself on the stage um, left um, because of the way it's in, um, I can't remember, where is this? Um, Homedale, the amphitheater. Okay. So there's, you know, once it started to rain, so once it started to rain, um, everybody flooded inside the little covered part. So there was really no room to move. So I was stuck at stage left and I was standing next to this kid and I, I got this, my family would tell you, I got this habit of people just talking to me. <laughs> so I don't know if I got that face that just screams, hey man, I want to hear your whole story, but you know, I'm always running into people and, you know, I'm, I'm the guy that just like, you know, sitting at the game. I done met this dude. He done told me his whole life story about his wife, his kids, everything. So this kid was telling me his story. And at first I thought he was just kind of BSing me, but he told me a story that he got into a really bad accident and that um, he kind of died, came back to life. He was fighting for his life. Um, and, you know, I thought he was just, you know, trying to tell me some war stories, but I could see he had like, stitches all across his skull mm. and he was holding this vinyl and a sharpie and he's like i'm a Nas fan and i'm gonna try to get him to sign my album and i'm like there's no way <laughs> that you're getting Nas is coming over to this side of the stage and he's gonna sign your album because concerts are timed out so mm. everything is on the time and when the time gets thrown off you know he performs with a band so everything's timed out when the time gets thrown off 
you know, it's going to throw off his whole show. So I was like, there's no way he's stopping to sign, you know, basically like sign an autograph for you in the middle of the show. Like, good luck. But um, if you can see this first picture, this is him like stretching like over there's people in front of him. You see shaking the other dude's hand. Yeah. He has a mic to his mouth. And he, um, I don't know what now I saw on his face, but if you see this next picture, he grabbed the vinyl from him and stopped his show and signed it from him. And when I tell you this made this dude's life, <laughs> like, wow. I mean, I never, like, it was like bigger than a kid at Christmas getting a big wheel, man. It was like, he was so happy. And I thought, that was so dope because that showed me that Nas is really hip hop. He's yeah. like, this dude not only, he didn't bring a CD, this dude bought his vinyl, you know, a vinyl of his album. He signed it for him, you know, and like to, to pause your show to like sign, write a message and name, do all that. I think that's dope, man. Like, you know, and that gave me a greater respect for Nas because he didn't have to do that. Um, you know, and it wouldn't, he wouldn't look bad if he didn't sign a vital or anything else. It was just something that was real genuine. You because, know? So. because no, nobody knew what that, that was all about except for, except for you and the kid. You know what I mean? So for him to do that. <laughs> yeah. And if you, if you, <laughs> and if you see the, the, the number of people that, that swarmed when Nas came over, I'm actually yeah. just holding the camera above my head trying to get the shot. So when trying I to took the, the pictures, I didn't even know if I got the shot yeah. because it was so many people in front of me because I'm not really seeing what I'm taking. I'm just like, they call spraying and praying. Like I'm just, you know, I'm shooting, shooting, shooting. And I actually ended up getting some dope, um, dope things. But, you know, when I saw him start reaching for the thing, you got to kind of anticipate the moment. I probably elbowed a few people, but, you know, they'll have to get over that to, Listen, I got the shot. They, they, must, they, <laughs> they, they must have known you. They must have known you rolled with the silverback gorilla, so they ain't gonna bother I you. Think anyway. so. You know what I mean? I